Well, never let a good crisis go unfilmed. That's the world of YouTube. You join me today uh, at 270 and Alum Creek Drive, which is an extremely busy intersection with a whole lot of trucks. Unfortunately, my Volkswagen decided to, it doesn't want to do anything anymore. At the moment, it is a crank, 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 no start condition. Uh, 1.8 liter turbo, five speed manual. I get in the car, it just cranks and cranks and cranks and never fires. It shut itself off as I was coming up, uh, coming up the ramp. Uh, it looks like it kicked an EPC code on the dash. Uh, not sure what that has to do with anything, but you probably can't hear this. I'll roll the window up so you can get the full dramatic effect. And that's it. Uh, no, nothing else. Which is weird. I've never really had any problems with this car. Um, unfortunately, I'm down here to pick up some tires for the Cyclone, um, which are about two miles that way. But the shop is literally on the complete other side of the city, uh, up in Plain City. So, I don't have a code scanner. And these newfangled vehicles have got a lot of sensors and stuff that can make this thing not start. Um, hmm. Not exactly how I wanted this day to start. I've got a lot to do today. <sighs> Welcome to Automotive Adventures with Austin. Well, normally that's having something to do with throttle connection. Or a sensor. Whoo, hot! We're able to disconnect all these guys. Make sure that's seated. Well, that's obviously very well seated. Uh, It's a hot coolant pipe, just FYI, and that looks like, to me, a gigantic vacuum leak. Can you see that? Right there? It looks like a vacuum leak. I don't know that that would cause my problem, but it might. So, let's see if I can find something to close up that gap with. I don't have any tools or anything with me because, you know, I don't need tools. Uh, what do I have that can fill that gap? <laughs> How about that? That'll at least fill it. What do you think the chances are I could fix a no-start condition with a foo-foo drink umbrella? <laughs> Probably not very good. Nope. Foo-foo drink umbrella did not fix it. Well, crap. There are no stores. This is a very light industrial area down here. There's really no stores anywhere around here. There's no support really at all anywhere around here. Um, hmm. It's no, I know it's got gas in it. It's a lot easier with a carbureted vehicle. Air, fuel, spark, what am I missing? I can figure that out a lot easier. This could just have some stupid sensor that's pissed off at me. Um, back with you in a minute. Well, there's nothing loose, nothing disconnected, nothing that I, I can see, nothing that's broken. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, 
four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, ten Mississippi. It doesn't just start. It doesn't even cough. Hmm. How about throttle modulation? Nope. Throttle modulation doesn't do anything. Hmm. Well. Poop. I am going to try to disconnect the throttle body. This guy here and see if it'll start without a signal at all, even if it's pissed. There's nothing else other than this little vacuum leak, which we have conveniently plugged with that. I don't see anything else blatantly obvious. So normally this is a throttle issue or it could be a a fuse or electrical issue, but all right, that is disconnected. We're gonna see if that allows me to start with no signal at all. I do have to be a bit careful here because I've only got so much battery life in this thing. Could not happen on the worst possible day, worst possible week. I've got a million things to do, and I'm literally as far away as I can get from the shop. Ah, oh, this sucks. Well, my solution for right now is going to be let this thing sit. And I'm going to walk down yonder to the gas station, have a drink of water. I'll let this little thing. Think about what it's done to me. How embarrassing it is to have to walk to the gas station when you're a dude that works on cars for a living and owns a fleet and can't fix your stuff. Ugh. Anyway, like I said though, you know, that's one of the nice things about old school cars. Air fuel spark, baby, that's it. If you don't have one of those things, you can usually figure out why um, without a fancy schmancy doohickey I can't figure out crap on this thing it's cranking but it could be a, any kind of number of things fuses relays sensors computers anyway see you guys in a little bit Ooh, frozen sprite lemonade that sounds yummy They're all the same price. All right, so sit rep. Um, I am two miles, two and a half miles away from Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, it's over yonder. It's 90 degrees outside and a two mile walk. As a fat bearded guy, doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. So 
Uh, the other nice thing with modern technology is I have two phones and I have summoned an Uber. So I should have an Uber here in just a moment. And he's gonna pick me up, take me to Advanced Auto Parts. And I'm going to buy some basic tools to be able to uh, diagnose, fix, repair, scab together, some sort of way for me to get this thing to start. Um, I doubt I can probably convince them to let me borrow their scan tool. I probably don't want to just buy a scan tool because they are kind of expensive. But I could buy a basic hand tool set and I can uh, disconnect my battery and uh, at least work on something with my hand tools. So I think that's probably where I'm going with this thing. Um, unless there's some sort of a real cheap code scanning option, maybe even a Bluetooth code scanner. I don't know. I'll see what I've got there. Um, I don't want to throw in the towel just yet because I'm literally like, the shop is 45 minutes that way and where I need to be is two minutes that way. So if I can get this thing fixed, I can go get my tires for my Cyclone so I can get this part done and not have wasted this entire morning. Um, otherwise, I gotta get a tow truck down here. I gotta get it, you know, you know how it goes. So we're gonna go to the auto parts store here in just a second. We're gonna see what we can find. Isn't it fun? This is what a day is like. It's a nice looking ride. Yes, sir. Oh, I just uh, had a car break down on the side of the road, so okay. you're taking me to the auto parts store. Oh, okay. Are you going <laughs> to buy some stuff and then come back? That's the idea. Oh, uh, okay. So what happened? If I can bribe you, I might bribe you to hang out for the car parts store for a minute and take okay. me back. Uh, I don't know what happened. I literally was just driving down the road and it shut off. Oh, yeah, what's your fault? It's a... Uh, Volkswagen Passat oh, manual. Oh, okay. Well, but like I got literally was driving and just whoop, shut off. So I don't have any tools with me. I don't have any computers with me. I can't figure out exactly what happened. But so you gonna go tool it? Uh, I'm gonna probably buy some quick basic hand tools. Mm -hmm. Come back over here and see what I can fix. And then if I can't fix it, I call a wrecker and come get me. Okay. Okay. All right. He's graciously allowed to wait for me. We're gonna see what we can find out in a hurry. Welcome to Advanced Auto Parts, where I typically don't ever shop, but beggars can't be choosers today. Hmm. Tasty, by the way. I have a car that's broken down. Don't know why. It's on the side of the interstate. Um, I don't want to pay a tow truck. I want to fix it right now. And I am on the entire other side of the this, this shop or the city from my shop. Okay. So, do you have anything that's a cheap code scanning capability? If it's Bluetooth or, or wired, either way, that I can clear codes with. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Trying to hunt down a code scanner. Combination set of metric wrenches. Die hard socket set. Fix anything with those two things. Hopefully I can get a code scanner. If I can't get a code scanner, it is what it is. I'll just clear out whatever's in there. Force this thing to restart. I would buy a jump box, like a little no-co box, but those things are like 120 bucks a piece. So. All right, we are $35 into this, plus my $10 Uber, plus $1.79 for my drink. Let's get back in the car and see if we can fix this thing. Uh, by the way, code scanner, the cheapest one they had was $100. No. Cheapest battery jump pack they had was $120. No. We'll make do without. All right, guys. Mamadou, thank you for dropping me off, sir. Appreciate it. Tipped him nicely because He's a nice man, and he did something for me he didn't have to do. So that's very nice. Uh, I walk back to my car. Got a little bit left of my drink. Don't have much battery life left in this thing, because I have cranked on it more than I should have. So I'm going to try to get this thing to start right off the rip, see if maybe just sitting and thinking about itself for a little while fixed its problems. 
Probably not. And I'll disconnect the battery, let it sit for 10 minutes or so, see if it resets, see if it starts. If it does, great. If it doesn't, we throw in the towel because I'm not going to have enough battery life to do anything else. And I'm not going to spend $500 and fix my car on the side of the road when we have a perfectly functional shop on the other side of the city. Hey, there's a Woody's towing guy. I should just pay him. All right. Let's see if you want to start for me. Please start. Come on, baby. Please start. Yeah! Started right up. All right. Idle's fine. See? Sometimes you just let them sit and think about it. What they did wrong. It's like children. Sometimes it works. Now, uh, I am about to get run over by this guy with this tractor trailer here. Let's go ahead and get out of his freaking way before he runs me over. Glad I got here in time for him to not destroy my car. Good lord, dude. Good lord, dude. Um, also, we still have the, oh, for God's sakes, let me just get out of the way here. We do still have the uh, the umbrella in the vacuum leak. That's still a thing. Uh, I now have a check engine light on. Another light that I don't know what that is light. It's fine. We're going to get down here to where my uh, tires are. And then we're going to complete our mission. And on the other side of things, I at least have some spare tools. Because you can never have too many tools, right? At least I only spent 30 something dollars, 35 bucks. And I'm probably not gonna shut my car off when I get down here, because it's running. Beautiful day, put my glasses on. Beautiful day out here. Hey, by the way, welcome to Automotive Adventures with Austin. You never know what you're gonna find here. You never know what the adventures are gonna be. Some days it's gonna be me building a muscle car some days it's going to be me complaining about some random internet issue or trying to buy some piece of crap car off of Facebook. Sometimes it's going to be me getting stranded on the side of the road while I'm trying to go on about my day. You never know what you're going to have. BFG Comp 2s. Oh yeah, by the way. Bet you can't figure out what that's for. That'll do, donkey. Unfortunately, my car is not running. Oh God, am I gonna get stranded here now? Come on. <sighs> oh, come on. Oh, she's alive. She came back to life. She is not happy. Warning, she is not happy. Let's get back at the shop as fast as we can. Hopefully. <sighs> So, if you're a Volkswagen person, what do you think it is? EPC can be anything from bad fuel, bad fuel pressure, manifold leak, vacuum leak, throttle positioning sensor, crank sensor, engine speed sensor, can be any of those things. EPC code, what is it? Hopefully, it lets us get all the way back to the shop. We can see what's going on. We can fix this thing without being on the side of the road getting hot. I don't know. We'll see. I do I do love this car. We bought this thing uh, at a good price. Uh, blown up. <laughs> Fixed it. 
and it's been a good little car. I'll be honest, it's been a very good little car. I've put, God, I don't know, 20,000 miles on this car in the last six months since I bought it, eight months since I bought it. So it's been a good little car, but uh, you know, it's still a $2,500 piece of crap with 180,000 miles on it. So. And it's a Volkswagen, and they do typically tend to be a little bit uh, persnickety. And we're going to slide into this rocking chair right here. Wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to. Well, we're idling at like 1100 RPMs. It's still idling at least. And uh, we have more or less made it to the land of constant construction, that is Plain City, Ohio. So I'm pretty much back to the shop. So um, car didn't light on fire, didn't die the whole time I drove it here. Um, all of which are good. So let's get in here and see what this code looks like and Make a plan to fix this thing. I love owning cars. Oh, that's one of the biggest downfalls of having a fleet of cars. Is you have to maintain the fleet of cars. When you've only got like one or two cars, all you gotta do is like, you know, occasionally fix one here and there. When you've got a bunch of cars, and we don't wanna talk about how many cars I have, it's not, not a part of this conversation. Um, you've always got something fixed. <laughs> You've always got something at once. Time, money, energy, all of those things. <sighs> A land of orange barrels. Welcome to Ohio. What do you think the chances are that my uh, Foo Foo umbrella survived the drive in the vacuum leak? Judging by the way the car is driving, <laughs> I think it's probably pretty good. Because I have no turbo. We'll see. At least it didn't light on fire. Or hopefully it didn't suck it into that hole. That would be bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be bad. Hey, we made it! We made it! Welcome back to work. The whole drive over here. Look at that. <laughs> Fix it. Uh, oh, where are you, OBD2 port? Okay. Cat efficiency code. Camshaft position timing over advanced code. Hmm. And uh, no speed signal circuit. Engine speed. I bet that's what it was. I bet that's what it is. And then on mine, like if I, so I'm gonna go erase, I'm gonna erase them. Okay. And if it's in like an electric issue, it'll immediately flag right back. Oh, so if it sees a... Like, like say it's a, a, a wire or some shit, it's not connected. It's no, no... Okay. So do I leave my Mai Tai 
I've seen that. Man at you, that's for sure. And it was literally just running 10 seconds ago. So we can go um, to live data. No RPM jump, no RPM pickup. Well, engine speed sensor. I literally just had this car running like. I, was, I didn't, didn't think you pushed it. Pushed yeah, it I mean, I literally had it running 10 seconds ago. <sighs> I love cars. Well, where are we gonna end this here? Uh, we made it back to the shop, mission accomplished. That's exciting. Uh, it will not now restart after I did make it all the way back across the city. I do still have my foo foo umbrella in there, so that didn't fix my problem, which frankly I'm shocked about. Um, but it looks like because we have no cranking signal, maybe we've got an engine speed sensor, which is one of the like 75 things that could possibly be on this car. So I'm gonna do a little homework and maybe you guys can give me your thoughts on it, what you should do next, what I should do next to fix this stupid thing so it doesn't leave me stranded again. Um, welcome to Automotive Adventures with Austin, my own little corner of the internet and the YouTube world. I, I work on my own pieces of crap and highlight what it is I do. So welcome aboard. This is not normally what this channel is all about, but it's an automotive adventure. Have a great one, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.